Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Dustin Collins. Today I'm talking about Summon. So this is an open source tool I created to make it easier to work with secrets and source control. By day, I am the developer advocate at Conjure. And by night, I organize the Boston DevOps meetup. So I want to talk about a few patterns in source control before I get into Summon. So um, we have secrets in source control. So I like to think of secrets as dependencies. So it makes sense to have them in source control. But the problem with this is that you have really weak access control on the dependencies, people who have access to the repo and have access to all your secrets. The second pattern is secrets not in source control. So you remove them and you put them somewhere else. Let's say, for example, you lay down secrets with your config management and your application expects it to be there. So that's OK, but then you have these implicit dependencies. Secrets encrypted in source control. I see this as kind of just kicking the problem down the line because now you've created decryption keys, which are also secrets. Not so great. Um, I think a better pattern is secrets referenced by source control. So um, you, you put the paths where secrets can be retrieved in source control. And then you put that next to your application so you can track changes. Um, and then Summon really works with this. Um, so Summon is a command line tool that res resolves reference secrets as environment variables into any process. So there's a few different parts of Summon, which I'll go into now. Um, the first part, as it goes, is a secrets.yaml file. So this is a mapping of environment variables to paths where secrets are stored. And you can see here we have some vars, which means this is a secret. We have some literals. And then we have files, which resolve to memory mapped, um, paths to memory mapped files. Um, an important part about Summon is that it has pluggable providers, so you're not locked into any, any certain um, secret store. So if you want to use Vault, you can use the Vault provider. If you want to use Conjure, you can use the Conjure provider. The contract is really simple. It's easy to write providers. Um, the pro providers available already are Conjure, AWS S3, OSX Linux Keyring, and Chef Databags. Some ideas I have, but I'm a little short on time. Hira, HashiCorp Vault, KeyWiz. Or you, you, know, you might have your own internal system, right? You can write it for that. I wrote Summon in Go. So it's just a single binary you can stick on your systems. You don't have to worry about dependencies. Um, it's got a bunch of flags, but there's defaults for many things. So usually you can just say Summon your tool, and you're off to the races. Um, and then the last part is the process. So I mean a tool, right? So you want to run Terraform or Docker or something like that. So any tool that accepts environment variables can be used with Summon. And so now I'll show some examples of how I use Summon day to day. Um, I use it with Docker. So you can see here there's this magic at summon end file. So if you put that, when you call Summon, it creates a memory mapped file that resolves your, your secrets in the end file format and makes it available to Docker. It's really useful. Um, I use it with Chef because I really hate working with the Databags API. So I just summon my secrets in there, and then I can use Ruby, ENV, just grab the secrets that way. I use it with Test Kitchen to test some of my infrastructure code. So that's, it's a similar pattern here. You can see um, I'm using the var file in the secrets.yaml. So this resolves the private key into a memory map file. And then the value of that environment variable is the path to that file. Um, I discovered this just a couple weeks ago that I can also use it with Postgres. So this is really nice because I can just summon, put the, the Postgres password, drop into the PSQL prompt mess around, and then when I exit, the password's not left on my system. I use it with Terraform. Um, there's a little trickery here because you have to use TFR for your environment variables, so it resolves the Terraform variables. But that works pretty well. And I use it with Ansible. So you can use it with Ansible for secrets, but I use it for the private key that I use to SSH around the machines because I don't really want to leave that on my machine. Um, and then you can interpolate the users. So you can use different users without having to switch your secrets.yaml file. An important thing to know about Summon is that it does not solve authentication and authorization. Why am I allowed to access these secrets? This is on the provider. So for example, for the S3 provider, you might want to use IAM roles, something like that. Um, how can you contribute? You could just use Summon and let me know what you think about it. You could write a new provider. It's very simple. You could even write one in Bash. Um, or you can open pull requests on someone's core. All of this is open source. Thank you. Um, get summons on GitHub. You can talk about it on Twitter with hashtag summon. I write stuff at DustinRCollins.com, and my Twitter handle is DustinMM80. 
Thank you. All right.